Last weekend, Donald J. Trump will be in the White House. Of course, he leaves uh, inauguration morning, Wednesday morning, and heading off to, to Florida. Uh, but we thought this would be a good opportunity to step back and, and talk about the record he has left, certainly for the markets. And we're going to get into this a little bit more in the next hour. But suffice it to say, uh, from the moment he was elected to the moment he lost on Election Day to Joe Biden, the S&P 500 has been moving at a 12 percent clip. In other words, rising on average 12 percent annually throughout his presidency. Only Bill Clinton and Calvin Coolidge had better performances. And I should stress uh, all of this coming from markets that were already strong. And in those other gentlemen's cases, uh, they previewed market collapses because the market had simply gotten overvalued. No idea what's going on now, but it is a perspective sometimes lost in the back and forth over his language, his tweets and, and all of that. Let's explore this in a little bit more detail, get into stimulus and what his successor wants to do to keep all that humming. Dan Geltru, Adam Lashinsky, Rebecca Walzer. Um, Rebecca, say what you will about the president politically and uh, maybe his ill-timed remarks that led to that assault on Capitol Hill. As far as the markets are concerned, he was this bull market, wasn't he? Yes, he was, Neil. He did a great job, and um, we should be... I don't think we would have survived coronavirus and the shutdown and the just complete shutdown if we hadn't had a really strong foundation. And um, and now what we need to do is figure out how to restore and move forward. And um, so, yeah, we definitely can thank him for the last uh, four years of bull markets. You know, Dan, you had mentioned very early on in the Trump presidency that before he got his tax cuts, he was cutting regulations. And that really preceded the boom that came and was iced with the obviously the tax cuts that would later come. Uh, your thoughts on that and how they could be potentially reversed now? There were three pillars in my mind, Neil, that really kept the market full charge ahead during the Trump presidency. That was the deregulation, that was the tax cuts, and, and, and it ultimately was his attitude of pushing that stock market higher and higher through Interest rates remaining low. We already saw how much he was riding Jerome Powell initially about getting those interest rates low. So this was a president who was extremely focused in on the markets, and he always touted how people were benefiting from their 401ks. So that really was something that he really wanted to stamp his name on, and he certainly did. You know, um, Adam, much has been said about the market's continued rise, even after the president lost. Um, and, you know, it is, it, it's continued unabated here. And I, I'm wondering, is the stimulus a part of it, the, the nearly $2 trillion that Joe Biden plans to put out there? It's up for a vote. We'll see whether he gets everything he wants. But the markets love stimulus now. And, they, and, and do you think that is what is going to keep this going? Clearly, the uh, the stimulus that we've already had has helped uh, has helped stabilize the economy. So the markets have taken comfort from that. And yes, I think the markets believe that the Biden administration will get at least some or most of the stimulus that it's asking for. Neil, in other words, there may be fights about aspects of it. There may be fights about the size, but there's broad consensus that they will get uh, you know a very large chunk of it. That that will help stabilize things. And then the other things, the other very important things that it that the administration intends to do to fight the pandemic, I think, gives the market hope that later in 2021, the United States can get back to a, a sort of normal economic behavior, which it clearly is not experiencing at the moment. Yeah, maybe that could explain, you know, last week, notwithstanding a down week for the market averages, not not all of them, small stocks did very, very well. Uh, but it, it, it's something to watch because that I know markets tend to focus on, on things that are down the road and they're optimistic down the road, I guess. Um, Rebecca, let me get your your take, though, on getting that stimulus through. Uh, and a lot of people have always talked about Republicans won't go along with them, won't be generous. But you have people like Alexander Ocasio-Cortez, uh, Bernie Sanders, who said it's not at, at nearly two trillion. It's not generous enough. Uh, the fourteen hundred dollar checks or stimulus checks. Uh, even though married to the $600 that's already gone out there, aren't generous enough. So could Joe Biden face more resistance from his own party than from the other party? 
Well, we're going to see a lot less resistance for his platform than um, Donald Trump ever faced. And that's because obviously he has, you know, two, uh, two, both houses of Congress. So we have Democratic control all around, and that is going to lead him to have a lot more leeway and, and potential to be pushed more to the extreme left on the AOC Bernie Sanders side. And my concern, Neil, is that, you know, this is starting to follow the monetary uh, theory that central banks can just print money indefinitely forever, that really that's how we print money and there's no real value um, you know, I, this is very dangerous. You've got $1.9 trillion being proposed now on top of the $4 trillion between CARES Act, Federal Reserve last year. $6 trillion in less than 12 months of time is absolutely unsustainable and, and is really a death sentence for the country long term. Uh, I, I, tax rates and I, everything else. Neil, I, I could not I could not disagree more. The, the reason he will be pushed less, perhaps, than the than the current president has been is that we're in the middle of a crisis. Uh, there's there's ample evidence that the stimulus that Biden is suggesting is more powerful than what Obama Biden did in 2009 and is warranted uh, by, by this crisis. And uh, if anything, the fourteen hundred dollars, Neil, shows that he is willing to moderate. He is trying to cut the balance between this two thousand that was the discussed in Georgia and whatever the Republicans uh, want, which is, you know, nothing, perhaps. All right. We should yeah, explain look, that it ends is, up being 2000 if you take the $600 from before. Dan, very quick thought on that. Uh, uh, th this is just the beginning of the push for spending, Neil. But I believe legislating is hard and with razor thin majorities that the Democrats have. I don't think it's going to be so easy for them to spend as wildly as AOC and Bernie Sanders would like to see. That's but a lot of spending, just the same. All right, I know you guys are coming back, so I, I wait for that. Don't wander too far. In the meantime,